Um, um, I won't get too much into the STEM endorsement because I wanted to make sure that we have CSO Arturo kind of share his perspective uh, before he leaves today. But I wanted to make sure again to mention the numbers that I, I did earlier. This defines our work. We definitely want to get CSOs, get students across San Antonio, across Texas, choosing, choosing the STEM endorsement because it really truly does prepare them for college through their, even if they go straight to career, they're getting that math, they're getting their science, they're getting all of their um, certif you know, certifications even. It's amazing now when you think, when you really do talk to district leaders and you talk to students and you get to see the options that they're getting, we want to ensure that we're increasing access and opportunities so students are able to engage in these ways to choose the STEM endorsement, to get all the college and workforce readiness skills that they need at, before they graduate. So it's really exciting. And we're starting this even in elementary. As we know, it's, it's getting more and more important earlier and earlier on. And so CSOs, although they're it's focused on 6th through 12th graders, we're, we're telling and we're mentoring our elementary campuses so that they can start young and start early. And, uh, you know, because now even as a fifth grader, they have many opportunities to choose STEM academies or choose STEM programs. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're getting our elementary campuses too. All right, CSO Arturo, I'm gonna ask you a few questions now, okay? Uh, would you mind sharing? Uh, what is your role in the Chief Science Officer program? Um, I've served on the Leadership Council for two years already, and um, I've helped uh, our CSO community by spreading uh, the CSO program to Samson Museum, which is where I did my action plan at. And I was able to create a project that is now in the youth center of the museum, which is where most students and um, young kids go for summer programs or classes uh, on the different, on the history and um, things you learn what, at the museum. That's awesome. You know, CSO Arturo came to me right around when the pandemic hit and our, our program, like everybody else's, flipped to virtual implementation. He's like, how am I gonna do an action plan now virtually? Or how am I gonna do it now because of all the challenges that are in front of us, right? And he was creative. He contacted one of our partners and he was able to create the STEM career exhibit. And we can show pictures of it in a little while, but it's just so exciting to see our chief science officers coming up with innovative ways to still fulfill their mission as a chief science officer, despite the pandemic and school closures, community closures across the, the state and everywhere, right? And so it's been really exciting because although many of these in-person events you see on screen aren't happening, we're still having really great events um, and meetings online and sometimes in smaller settings with social distancing, of course. Um, so I'm very proud of you. I know just like uh, Arturo, his counterpart over there at Dwight actually is CSO Alicia. And she has this quote, we are going to open new opportunities for new kids. We're going to show them you are somebody and you will make a great impact on our future. So we've, we're positioning our CSOs as leaders in their community, as leaders in their school, who are inspiring other students and making a difference in whichever capacity they choose. And that's the beauty of it. CSOs are often uh, doing things that excite them, right? Uh, so CSO Arturo said, hey, I love SAMSAT, the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology. I wanna connect with that partner that we have and I wanna see and what we can come up with, right? And uh, CSO Alicia inspiring her peers, um, her action plan might be more school focused, right? So we see all these beautiful action plans coming together and making a difference across our community. So CSO Arturo, I want to ask next, you know, why is this kind of program, the Chief Science Officer program, why is it important? Why do you think other students should join? The program, uh, the Texas CSO program is important to me because it helped me become the leader in the STEM community that I thought I would never become. It has opened me to new challenges and activities that I have been able to do over my over the three years that I have been in CSO. I have met I have met 
different companies like IDRA, Boeing. We've had talks with NASA. It has been amazing. Other students should consider becoming a CSO because CSO, CSO is basically taking place in STEM and there are many careers in that in STEM and you know it, there's so much that you can do with being a CSO you you can go and have a conference with an astronaut from NASA or an engineer who helps create the rockets you can you can have a conference with the San Antonio water system and see how they filter the water and transfer it from the river that to our refrigerators and faucets and I think uh, every student should have the chance to at least learn or know what being a CSO is about. Thank you. Well said, Arturo. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been really great being able to partner and connect and engage our chief science officers with the broader STEM community. Um, Sam sat in the top right of this, but also the Boeing STEM signing day, which we got to have virtually this year, which was super fun. And in many of our uh, the students involved in Boeing STEM signing day, or at least being nominated for that, are actually chief science officers as well. You know, they're graduating as a senior, going on to a STEM uh, career pathway. And so they're going and kind of a, like you would see an athlete sign to, uh, to a school or program to play for them. Uh, it's the same situation, but with STEM, they're committing to a STEM degree or major. And so it's really exciting to be able to connect our chief science officers to these partners, to these events, and to build a lot of these workforce readiness skills, soft skills that are actually really hard, like giving a proper handshake here in the picture and how to introduce yourself to uh, a future employer or a partner, a community member, or a government leader. So it's been really exciting to kind of build these skills through our programming. Also, it's important because students through their experiences as the chief science officer, like, like Arturo said very well, is they get to kind of find their pathway, their niche in STEM. We know that STEM is crazy broad, right? Like when you think about a STEM career, that ranges uh, from so many different degrees and, and experiences. And so, you know, this experience as a chief science officer helps them kind of see where they fit in the STEM world, what they want to do, how they want to give back through STEM, whether they're going to be the, the next coder, um, that they're gonna invent something new, innovation is very important. Uh, and whether they're a, a coalition builder, whether they're bringing people together, right? And so that helps them cultivate their STEM identities, helps them uh, connect with future mentors, employers, supervisors for internship positions. Um, and so all of this just helps serve as a catalyst for their STEM identity. Um, let's see, next question, Arduto. So we've got here, uh, we've got in some of these pictures, our advisors. Our advisors are our teacher sponsors or campus leaders. They're our main point of contact at the campus level or organization level if it's out of school time kind of program. And our advisors uh, give up, you know, they, they serve to connect our CSOs, bring them together, make sure that they're coming to the meetings. They're also getting trained so they can better support their CSO and connect their families to the program and what's happening at their campus. So according to like your perspective, Arturo, I see that your advisors here in the meeting, uh, you know, how, um, how important is it to have a good advisor, that person that you could go to? A CSO advisor is important because they can be, they, they help you with uh, coming up with your action plan because there are times where you don't know how to uh, get a hold or contact a company or a business. Uh, they, they can help you with like, you know, the assignments that you are given on your classroom or if you need help coming up with your action plan or, you know, you're stuck in, you know, the due dates right around the corner and you haven't gotten a single idea in your mind. <laughs> My CSO advisor, Mr. Padilla, is very help helpful because um, every time uh, I've emailed him, you know, asking for help, you know, contacting businesses, he'll, he, he sends me links to like the sites. He actually helped me get in contact with SAMSAT. So 
uh, I would I was really I was really thankful for them because I was going crazy trying to figure out how do I get a hold of them. You know, I don't, I'm so new to this. Um, he has helped me. You know, whenever I'm ready past a due date for the action plan, even come up with the smallest one, just so I can get something. Um, he has he has done a lot for us so much that I. <laughs> <laughs> he really is he's there at every event he's he's there to support y'all he comes to our office hours so he can learn how to better support and our and our advisors truly are that I mean they they help support the program uh the sustainability of the program the individualized supports as CSR or Arturo talked about and to to also maybe help build a pipeline there in their community so thinking about what other feeder schools they can connect to so that they build a really strong STEM pipeline there in their own communities. So advisors are crucial. They're boots on the ground. They see the CSOs more than I would since I'm not attending that campus or, or community organization as much as they are. And they just, they're just wonderful. I think the, the, the strength and sustainability of the program is really uh, depends and determined by the, the, the excitement the support that comes from the advisor as well. Uh, so we're just so, so blessed to have a wonderful group across the city that are just constantly cheering on our CSOs and want to try to support student success in any capacity that they can, which they already are, but they wanna do more. And so I just, kudos to our advisors. They're so important to the program. Uh, families have also noticed a difference in their chief science officer, their student, their child, right? They've seen that, wow, my child can get up in front of a big auditorium of people and has a much better time with it. Uh, their speaking abilities, their social skills and abilities are enhanced. Uh, they're, you know, getting more comfortable with kind of coming out of their shell. And that's the number one takeaway that I keep hearing from parents is, wow, they're coming out of their shell. They're, they're teaching me things I didn't know about or, you know, I didn't know about this career pathway perhaps. And how can I as a parent or family or friend uh, support this, this CSO in their pathway? And they want to know more. And so I think that's the beauty of, of what we've seen come out of this program as well is, is the family leadership component, families coming in, getting involved and in supporting the program as well because they see for themselves the benefits uh, that they've witnessed from their own child. So it's, that's been really great as well. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about an action plan. An action plan is, is a project. It could be something, like Arturo said, something small. Maybe it could be something at their school level, maybe a morning announcement uh, where they do the scientist of the month and they're starting to get more scientists kind of in the ears of their peers. Uh, it might be a STEM community event. So they might be kind of event planning all year long for something that they really are passionate about. Uh, it could be like a hackathon that they're getting other students engaged and learning how to code through community hackathons. There's really amazing action plans that are sometimes connected to environmental justice, to career workforce connections and empowerment for students. Uh, even through exhibits like Arthur's over here building for a museum about STEM career pathways. Uh, they just totally range. And it just, again, depends on the CSO, depends on the size of the cohort as well. Some uh, campuses have more than two CSOs. They might have seven or eight chief science officers at their campus. And so they might collectively work on one action plan um, or they might do an action plan collectively and individually. So it definitely ranges and there's a lot of leeway with that because again, it's, it's student driven and student led. So we can't put them in a box. <laughs> so lastly, uh, you know, we can see here a poll that we did uh, from our first end of year uh, annual report. We finished our first full year of implementation last school year. And uh, it was really great to hear from the chief science officers what it means to them to be a CSO. Um, it means that they're an advocate, that they are determined, responsible, they're a difference maker, that they empower, they're part of a family, they're confident, they're creative, they're a mentor. Um, and I keep seeing that even more and more this school year too, is, is this mentorship component is coming out of it that's just beautiful and organic.
And it's great to watch our CSOs mentor new, new students that they've never met before, mentor their peers, their fellow CSOs, and even mentor students from other regions. Um, and then the CSOs being mentored by our Alamo STEM ecosystem partners that are fabulous and empowering our chief science officers. So it's been really amazing to see. Uh, I think the last question I had for you, CSO Arturo, I know you have to go, but I think the last one here was, I was curious, you know, based off of your own personal experiences in the program, um, how have your experiences helped you identify the type of STEM career that you're most interested in? What do you want to do? What STEM career pathway are you interested in? And how did the program help you find uh, that pathway out? Uh, or, um, I had always wanted to be a baker, but now I'm kind of leaning towards a chemical engineer because when the first year that the CSO program came to San Antonio, we had a, uh, there was a web talk with Boeing and they were talking and they had talked about how, you know, the process of them creating the planes and, it, and, and, um, running tests to see if they were gonna make it to like, you know, the distance. And I learned about this career after collaborating with um, a local museum because over over there at the museum, they had, um, um, they had like a, I, sorry, I'm like kind of stuck. They had um, an object there. It was having to do with um, a plane. It was uh, uh, the engine. And you could, it, they were showing the inside of the engine. And that really interested me. And as a CSO, I get to have many opportunities to interact with the Alamo STEM ecosystem from other STEM professionals. And this career is probably my go-to when I uh, start college. Absolutely. Yeah, when we think about what astronauts eat in space, or <laughs> right, that's one example of many examples that I could think of right now. But uh, that that that's a that's great. It's into engineering. It touches science. It touches math, technology for sure. Uh, you know, this is very. It's funny how they overlap, right? So when you think about a STEM career, they're not just a science career or a technology career definitely there's an overlap. They're very interdisciplinary. So that's cool that you're seeing the different connections. You're taking your personal interest of baking and saying, hey, baking is actually connected to engineering and science and all these things. So it's, it's just really neat. Um, and that's cool that it came from an experience you had as a CSO where you got to learn from bowling. And so I think that's what it's all about. It's what it's about because our students are having more experiences that kind of open their eyes to their future in STEM. So thank you again, CSO Arturo. I know you might have to jump off at some point now, but thank you for sharing your voice, your perspective. Um, I could talk about the program all day, but it's way more meaningful when it comes from a, a student, a, a chief science officer himself. So thank you so much. Um, thank you, I appreciate you. Yeah, I thank you for letting me be, uh, being able to speak tonight, uh, t today. I had a really good experience being able to share my experience with these three years of being a CSO. And for those new schools who are joining this year, you're gonna love it. <laughs> Thank you, Arturo. And hey, you've got a big task ahead of you, bud, because you're leaving middle school and you're going off to high school. And so we need to start the program at your new high school that you're going to. So I'm excited about working on that with you this summer. <laughs> Thank you again. I appreciate it. And uh, big thanks to your mom as well. <laughs> uh, hey, Arturo, before you go, uh, copy the link that I put in the chat. Oh. Later, okay? Make awesome. sure you copy that link to view later. <laughs> Great. Okay, I did. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dan. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up here in a second because um, I want to hear from you now. Um, I'm gonna skip. Excuse the the slides; they're gonna progress pretty quickly because I forgot. I'm gonna kind of jump ahead since there's quite a few things I want to share with you before you get off the call. I know I want to save for the end some like specific implementation questions. How to start? 
I think that's that's the the top of our minds, uh, especially for any teachers that are in the room or district leaders at the district level. And you want to start at a few schools uh, next school year. I've got you. I'm going to go over kind of the how to startup guide in just a little bit. Uh, but in case there's also, I see many um, STEM partners in the room, thinking about the training opportunities that we provide for our chief science officers. This slide captures um, a wide range of opportunities and activities that our chief science officers are engaged in through many events that we have. Every year we have our annual Leadership Training Institute. It's typically a two-day event. Um, where students are learning about the program, but also having experiences to build their own uh, networking, writing skills, public speaking skills. We'll have different strategic planning kind of sessions where chief science officers are learning about how to begin like a needs assessment. What, what needs to be done? What needs are there at my school or community? And then after they do a needs assessment, using that to inform a particular action plan that they wanna start. And so that's really great because they wanna learn about evidence-based practices in a sense, right? They wanna kind of see and experience for themselves what needs there are in their community and then be able to collect evidence that they made an impact and what kind of impact they had. Uh, teamwork activities, bonding with other students, those are the fun activities too that our chief science officers thoroughly enjoy. I'll never forget in our very first year we had at Palo Alto College, uh, we had a, a networking event with, through a STEM Expo where we had tons of different partners from the community come and set up booths and our chief science officers I gave them business cards and said hey <laughs> go introduce yourself and practice that elevator speech practice that handshake and eye contact and all of these really great skills that we try to em embed within the program and our curriculum um, is really important to our students we've got CSOs writing blogs and writing articles uh, participating in podcasts and starting up their own YouTube channels because uh, they're inspired virtually to do the same thing some of you are doing with your YouTube channels and get some really great content out there to mentor other students and get other kids excited about STEM. Um, I'm going to share in just a moment, um, I'm going to share a link with you that has most of our highlights from the program here. It's very multimodal. You'll see lots of links, videos, pictures, some highlights from our social media accounts are all linked to our Wakelet page. So in a moment, I'll drop that in the, in the chat so that you can bookmark it and come back to it later because it really does capture a lot of these things uh, with our chief science officers this program year. Uh, and so I want to encourage, again, for any of our partners on the call, if you look at something on here like STEM presentations or networking, if you look at something on this slide and you're like, hey, that's how I can collaborate with the chief science officers. I have a great idea. Please, please, please email me. We are always looking forward to connecting and engaging our chief science officers with you. So it's been remarkable over the past couple of years now, ending our second year of program implementation in Texas. Uh, it's been amazing to see the connections through digital badging opportunities through different organizations or us setting up at your next event and having a booth and ha leading a STEM demonstration. We call them STEM demonstrations. Um, you know, these are ways in which we can connect. Um, and then maybe just a simple interview where chief science officers get to know you and your pathway and how you got to the career that you're in please email me, please connect with me. Maybe Michelle, you could put uh, my email in the chat. That would be fantastic. Um, while I go grab that Wakelet link for you as well. So I'm gonna pause here. Any questions, now's a great time. We're gonna have kind of an intermission while I pull up some other things that I wanna share with you. I'm gonna stop sharing now. This is a great time to unmute yourself or drop something in the chat if you have a question. I'll go ahead and pause in case anybody wants to unmute and I'm going to catch up with what's happening in the chat room as well.
we don't have anything in the chat right now. Um, I went ahead and I already put in your email address, Stephanie. And I'm also dropping in the uh, link for the IDRA YouTube page. So if you want to uh, watch this recording or other CSO recordings, you can find them there. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I'll hang out here. Teacher wait time. It's a thing. So I'm going to wait a sec <laughs> and see if there are any questions, any burning questions I can address. I'd like to acknowledge as well, um, you know, as we think about that YouTube link, let me go to it. I'd also like to point out a really great link as well. I'll throw it in the chat. We have uh, partnered with the D. Howard Foundation. Uh, Wayne Fagan's on the call, chair of the D. Howard Foundation, and we've had this amazing opportunity to uh, connect and to start a virtual STEM field trip series. So while I get the link and throw them in the chat, Wayne, you want to kind of talk about that for the group? You're a great example of how we've partnered with the foundation in our community. Well, thanks. Thanks. Well, I'm a huge fan of IDRA, as I guess most of us on this call are. Um, the concept of the D. Howard Foundation, uh, for those that don't know about us, uh, <clears throat> if you go on 281 past the airport and see a bunch of red buildings over there, red hangars, that was the D. Howard Company. Uh, and so what we try to do is uh, integrate aviation and aerospace uh, experiences and curriculum in STEM uh, programming in pre-K to 12. And uh, so uh, we look for uh, ways to partner with organizations to do that. We partner with a lot of organizations. And uh, I, I was introduced a while back to IDRA and Dr. Garcia. I uh, became a huge fan of what we're talking about here and her. And I said, look, we can bring aviation and aerospace uh, STEM expertise to the chief science officers program and do virtual tours. And we have connections with the US Air Force and we have connections with uh, aerospace medicine and we have connections with robotics used in aviation. And it's not just about a and mechanics and pilots. There are a lot of STEM disciplines that are used in aviation and aerospace. Uh, one of the, you may have uh, remember, there was this probe that went to Jupiter. It was uh, a while back, a big deal, and then it's going further out into the galaxy. Well, the project director from that is uh, a partner of ours. And so we bring those kinds of experiences. We have astronauts uh, that are on our board, one astronaut. And uh, so that's what we proposed. And uh, through the technical expertise of, uh, of uh, uh, IDRA, uh, we started finally. And uh, we've done um, uh, two virtual tours and they're, both, they're posted on both uh, IDRA and the D. Howard Foundation YouTube channels. And we intend to, uh, our goal is to do at least one a month. The other thing that we do is that I've, I've told Dr. Garcia that please provide me with the name and email address of all of your advisors, because we have a, uh, it's called the D. Howard Foundation uh, Aeronautical STEM online portal for our, for our program. And we provide all of the advisors with its user and password protected and we provide all of these uh, advisors to the CFO, CSO uh, to, uh, to have access to that. So that's what we're doing. We're delighted to have the collaboration and we spread the word about uh, the IDRA and uh, Chief Science Officers Program throughout the United States every chance we get. Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate that. We appreciate partnering with the D. Howard Foundation. And this is a prime example 
of what we could do um, in your own communities as well. You know, I, I keep mentioning the Alamo STEM ecosystem because uh, we, our chief science officer student body is, is mostly comprised here in San Antonio, even though we are expanding. Uh, we've had some cabinets in Houston. We've had CSOs from Galveston. We're really hoping for El Paso. I know I got to present uh, to Clint ISD as well as uh, some Region 19 uh, educators as well. And so we're truly hoping to start in El Paso, Texas, the Rio Grande Valley through our network there and uh, the greater Austin STEM ecosystem where we're trying to, to launch in Austin and any other educators that are in this space that are interested, I'm gonna tell you now how to join. Um, the Wakelet page, I just wanted to explain to you the link that I dropped in the chat to our Wakelet page. This is a fun, fun tool. I don't know if you've used it, educators, you probably have, but it's a wonderful one-stop shop with all the things. And so this is a wonderful collection that captures our highlights from our 2020 21 school year. And this is a wonderful way as well to kind of see for yourself what our CSOs are up to. There's more and more content that I keep getting from our chief science officers being that many schools are not done yet, right? So our chief science officers aren't done yet. I know some of our chief science officers, for example, at Cass Med High School have an awesome uh, demonstration plan for their school event on June 4th. And so keep coming back to this link because you're going to see more and more media pop up um, as well as follow us of course on social media uh, we're on twitter facebook and instagram it's at texas cso so that's how you can stay connected and see what's up and what our cso's are up to um, i now want to kind of switch gears and i want to talk about um, how to start um, many people on this call are um, probably wondering this, and I can upload this into the chat. Let me just do that real quickly um, because I wanna make sure you can see um, this infographic of how to start. Um, so I put this together to just kind of highlight a few points, okay? Um, so one being set up a meeting. That's always a great place to start. <laughs> a conversation goes a long way. Um, and, you know, just, you know, even if you're a pro at starting new programs at your campus or in your community, um, it's a great way to just brainstorm with me first. So I put my email, it's in the chat, set up a meeting and feel free to invite whoever you want to that meeting, whether it's your principal, your district team coordinator, your family liaison at your campus, uh, or your community uh, leads, or your uh, leadership team members, whomever that might be set up a call because uh, this program, it, although there are certain fidelity requirements as part of the International Chief Science Officer Program, this program could be tweaked and it looks very different in different campuses, especially in out of school settings in clubs or Girl Scout troops or Boy Scouts troops. So there's many ways we can tweak it for your needs. And so just having a brainstorming session with me will go a long way. It'll help bring a lot of clarity. Um, next, of course, is lay the foundation. So something to think about is, um, you know what, let me pause here because I think it's too small. Let me see if this is bigger. Oh, it's too slow. So I don't want to use that one. I'll stay with this one because each file will have to load. But thinking about the uh, foundation of the program to make sure it has a strong, solid foundation we talked about how important an advisor is, right? So who would be our point of contact at your campus? That's super important for the program to run smoothly. So an advisor doesn't have to be a teacher. It could be um, a family liaison, it could be a counselor, it could be an admin, it could be an academic dean. Um, if I go through my list of who my advisors are, the positions vary greatly. Um, but it definitely does help. I've seen for myself over time that it's somebody connected at the campus on a database basis. Then at a district level, that's very important to have a champion at the district level, but also having somebody at the campus level has been really helpful. Then think about what six or 12th, six through 12th grade students will you select for the first year? Sometimes chief science officers will elect kind of like a leadership council. They'll have elections for who would be the chief science officer. Um, that doesn't work the first year, right? The first year we need to select, and you might continue selecting students um, from then on, 
but you know, uh, as far as who would you elect, that's very important to, to think about because you wanna create a meaningful experience for students. So it's important to choose the chief science officer wisely. You know, if it's a student who is in every program and everything, this may not be very meaningful experience for them to be a chief science officer because they're already in 20 other things, right? You wanna find, uh, make sure that the students that are being selected uh, would want to be in this program because they're interested, but they may not have the highest interest in STEM either. They, know, they may not be the top robotics kid at the school. It might be uh, somebody who, hey, I think I wanna be in a STEM career one day. This program would be really helpful for me to learn more about that. Or, you know what, I'm looking for a new leadership opportunity to get involved. And I do love STEM. I love science or math or technology or all of them. Um, so this might be a good program for me. So again, choose and select the students wisely. That's really important. Also consider what administrative tasks need to be completed to start the program at your campus organization. Is there any paperwork that needs to be completed? Do you need to connect me to a school counselor or secretary to get things moving with it? or with an admin to get things moving. So this is something to consider as well, especially if you're trying to create like a, a new club experience. I know from experience as a science club sponsor, there's paperwork for that. So just be ready. Um, get others involved. What other leadership team members can serve as a CSO advocate and champion at your campus or district level? That's really important. Um, I've seen the sustainability and the excitement about the program spreads district wide when you have a district team coordinator right there with you or you have somebody at the district level who can kind of help coordinate all the moving pieces for the district and get many campuses started that's very important what other feeder schools or programs can sign up to cultivate a stem pipeline in your community that's something to also consider and then don't leave families out how have families and friends been contacted have you let them know about this opportunity for their child for their students, spread the news to all your teacher friends, to all your, all your educator friends or people in the community. Let them know that you guys are interested in starting and get that whole squad and team together. It's very important for the success of the program. And then of course, as I mentioned, select your students, select your chief science officers. You know, thinking about broadening participation, we definitely wanna, uh, you know, extend the first invite, right, to our students of color, to our female students. We know that looking at the field, that like, especially coding field, I think only 1% are Latinas, right? So thinking about that demographic, thinking about the data and how that informs a student program like this, uh, making sure that you're inviting first students, again, who aren't in everything and everything. They're looking for one thing to kind of really pour into that school year and invest in. Um, that's really important. We'll have CSO registration links in the beginning of the fall semester. So around July, August, I will have um, a registration link for students to fill out. That's uh, very important as we move on to registration. Uh, be sure to complete all initial registration forms and ongoing tasks via Google Classroom. Um, I've dropped in the chat this infographic, which is embedded with two important links. One link that is on this infographic is our site intent form. And I'll be sure to drop it in the chat in a moment when I'm done sharing this infographic. Um, but it is, again, hyperlinked in the PDF I shared. This site intent form is your registration form to start in the fall. So if this is something you're interested, this is the link you want to bookmark. This is the link that you want to share with everybody that you're getting involved with. Um, because this is ba the basic registration form before we start uh, for the fall. Um, throughout the school year, we do use uh, Google Classroom. So as being a new chief science officer, as a student, as a teacher, you will gain access to a whole new Google suite. You'll, we have our own domain. It's private. It's protected because, again, we are working with minors just like a district. School district has their own private accounts and people outside the domain can't contact the minors. It's set up the same way. It's very safe. And it helps us have this space together where we can share our program activities and events and any paperwork that's necessary throughout the school year. So it's a really great opportunity. Um, and we've been leveraging this from the beginning. It's been very helpful. And then lastly, follow the game plan. Um, I've also embedded here, and I'll share it again in the chat in a moment, 
Um, but I've embedded a link here to our tentative schedule of events for the next school year. So we finished our program year and now we're gearing up for our next program year. And we know what events are coming because they happen every year. And so I've already um, put some tentative dates in the chat. Um, I'll share them in the chat in a moment, but they're embedded here on this infographic. Um, so the game plan, definitely we start our year with our Leadership Training Institute. You'll see that on our event schedule for September. It's a two-day training event to get everybody on board for the program. Then we have our cabinet meetings. We have a fall and spring semester cabinet meeting where we get together with the CSOs in that community, just that community, not Texas wide, but just that community. Um, and we wanna make sure that things are moving and going well, that our CSOs are informed of all the things that are happening and connected to their STEM community members. And then we have our end of year showcase. And that's super fun because our CSOs showcase what they did that year. And they share their reflections about how the program has impacted them, what they learned from their role as a chief science officer, as a leader in their school and community. They're super fun events. If you ever want to, as a STEM partner, uh, partner up with us on any of these events or show up to any of these events or partake in our STEM expo that we have, we would love to have you. So I wanna extend that invitation. We also would like you as the advisor to host one campus visit. So I'd like to show up at the campuses to just see how things are going and to help build and cultivate that relationship with you. So um, well, even if that means I'm driving to Houston, which we've done many times to visit our chief science officers in Houston. And oh man, that's been so helpful to shake hands and to see the school and to see the difference that the CSs are making. It's wonderful. And so that's very important. And the last thing, of course, is a pinnacle part of the program is engaging our CSOs with our STEM professionals with leadership opportunities that arise here in San Antonio. We have core for STEM. We have the Boeing STEM signing day. We have all these wonderful events. We have camps and different informal ed partners that are doing so many things. And we would love to just connect our chief science officers to at least one STEM or leadership opportunity per semester. So this is a really quick infographic to show you kind of what the process is of how to start. Um, and then the lastly, um, I will share these links in the chat, even though they're embedded in the infographic I already shared. This is a little snapshot of our school year. We have our training every September. We have our fall cabinet meeting around November. We have our spring cabinet meeting in February. We have our end of year ceremony in May. So, and in between that, we have different leadership council meetings and we have office hours, uh, which have been super helpful, especially since we went virtual. Um, office hours, I host those, or my CSO leadership council members host those. And it's just a great way to just have an open door policy and have a link and say, hey, come jump in this meeting and ask us any questions uh, or ask us. Uh, let us know what support you need and we're here for you every week. And that's been really helpful to support advisors, to support new campuses and even returning campuses as well. I'll go ahead and share in the chat the registration link. So this is the site intent form. So if you're interested in starting a chief science officer cohort, uh, maybe you have a cluster of schools that you wanna try in your district. Maybe you wanna try it in your feeder pattern. Maybe you just, maybe you're a science teacher or a math teacher and you just want to start as the advisor next year with something small, with two chief science officers. I'm here for you. Here's your site intent form. Email me and we'll get this going. Okay, so definitely start to fill out this form. It does require some administrator or leadership uh, parts as well. You want to make sure you have that team, that core team I talked about, that you can input that, uh, their information into the form as well. And so you'll choose Texas and you'll choose a cabinet. Now, if you're not San Antonio, Galveston or Houston and you're a different city, there's a space for you to put other and insert your new cabinet, your new city, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna open the room for any questions because I know we're out of time. I don't see any questions in the chat right now, Stephanie. Did I explain it that well? There's no way. <laughs> I put a, I put a, I, I, hi, can you all hear me? Yes, we hear you. Uh -huh. Okay, um, I put a 
little description of what I'm doing currently uh, in Region 19. And uh, I'm thinking that it would probably be something uh, beneficial, uh, this program, with some of the stakeholders that I have in our, in our group. I have a design, a design team uh, with uh, our STEM, our STEM, uh, I, I'm, I myself am uh, uh, putting together a collaborative uh, through the Texas uh, STEM ecosystem. And, um, and so I'm thinking that uh, anything that would really help to, to uh, make the teachers, you know, the students more comfortable with the process, not just as a, as a, you know, as a thing that they can do on the side, but that they start immersing themselves to their campuses in the STEM, in the STEM program, the STEM uh, um, design. And I'm, I'm thinking that this would probably be something good. I would just need to be, get a little help. This is a kind of the first time I get an insight into the program. So I'm thinking that uh, anything or any suggestions, any advice or anything like that, that uh, I could get uh, coming our way would be very helpful. Absolutely, Mr. Herrera. We um, have wonderful support from Region 20. And, um, you know, it actually, Region 20 hosts a lot of our events and meetings. It helps us connect with all of our Alamo STEM ecosystems. So having the ESC support is so helpful for this program. And thinking about all the connections you have with the STEAM coordinators, STEM coordinators, it just trickles down, right? That whole funnel approach. And so um, I'm actually working, I'm actually the lead of the Alamo STEM ecosystem, and I actually work with the Texas ecosystem, the greater Austin and the Texas ecosystem with Michelle Sedbury. So we have these wonderful networks that we're leveraging, right? And so we have a great network to help you start. And so uh, definitely be assured of that. I can have a separate brainstorming session with just you and we can iron out all the details and make sure you're mm -hmm. ready to go. And um, if, if we need to go there physically, uh, we can plan for that in the fall. Uh, but until then we can do everything virtually too um, and set up all the meetings that we need to have and, and maybe some information sessions that I could leave for you just to get the word out and get the interest going. Okay. Yes, uh, Michelle's a good buddy of mine. We we yes. go back to you when, from our days in Lubbock. So, oh, so, uh, wonderful! Yeah, yeah she's a wonderful was. advocate. Wonderful advocate, and so Absolutely. yeah. So we'll definitely work with you. Um, I'm excited to work with you. I have your contact info from the email earlier today. So definitely, I'll keep in touch with you. I'll follow up. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine, for being here today. You're a wonderful partner with the Chief Science Officers. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And thank you for the overview. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I saw some questions, uh, Cameron, that you had. How many see? Oh, okay, Michelle answered it already. Yeah, so sometimes, um, you know, when start small, right? Sometimes that's the best option. Start small, have a male and female representative, kind of like a representative for your whole campus. And so these chief science officers are your lead STEM ambassadors at your campus. And they can also recruit some help and support, though, from any STEM related clubs or orgs or leadership council groups as well. So but these two uh, chief science officers would help start maybe a, a small cohort also throughout the school year, but definitely starting with at least two. Um, some campuses, as I mentioned earlier, have many more because they know like uh, maybe they're after school club right that meets and so they have already 12 kids and so they all go through training but out of that club sometimes I've seen um, just two are the main leads so you know it's 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 very interesting how it's played out so you know definitely start with two and then you might have lots of interest from the student body to want to be a, hey I want to do that how can I be in it and that's really great too because you want to try to eventually have uh, various grade levels, right? Because eventually that, that student's going to leave and go on to high school or go on, you know, and graduate. And so, um, you know, with a new campus that's maybe at the high school level, I wouldn't recommend starting with seniors because they're going to leave, right? So same thing with eighth graders. I maybe wouldn't start for the first year with eighth graders because they're going to leave you. Um, I would start with the sixth grader or the freshman 
Um, if you're interested in starting that way, you most likely have them coming back the following year and then you have their support and then maybe you have some more students that are joining as well. So just for sustainability, that, that might be something to think about as well. So we have a lot of um, transients sometimes. So in those situations, how has it played out? Like we, we do have kids who move in and out a lot. Yes, I have had that happen too. Yes. And so uh, sometimes we're able to follow that student where they go. And so we'll start at that other campus that they're at. That definitely happened with um, CSO Ernesto, one of our leadership council students. Um, he moved, of course, families move, right? So he moved to a new area of San Antonio and he started the program and found a, an advisor because he wanted to stay in it. Um, and then with the campus he left, we found a couple new CSOs that could start. So, you know, if you want to start a little bigger and cast them a little wider, it might be better to start with maybe four chief science officers, just so that if one or two move, you have a couple students there that are remaining in the program. And that might be more helpful so that mid-year you're not selecting students and starting over, right? Um, even though that's that's totally okay and acceptable too. So. Um, you know, we can definitely help facilitate that and um, uh, and help you get started and kind of brainstorm what it could look like at your campus for sure. Are you at a middle school, high school? Out of I think sixth grade science. Sixth grade science? Yes. Uh, oh, I that was my jam. I taught sixth grade science for a long time. I loved it. So, so we're a middle school and we have a magnet program and then we have the kids who are zoned for a school. Right. And I the kids who are zoned for a school and I want something for those children because the kids who go to the magnet program, yes. they get a lot of stuff and a lot of experiences. And I'd like my my kids deserve that, that too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm totally on that level. And I, I love that you're thinking of that too, because that's super important. Many students who aren't in STEM schools or magnet schools or P-TECH or all the things, they still wanna be involved in STEM in some way and be connected to STEM. So I love that you're thinking of that. Um, and sixth grade is a wonderful grade to start it in. Absolutely. Then I have another question. It says membership is free this year. Is yes. there a cost to the school afterwards or? Yeah, or so that's a great question. Uh, uh, sorry, chat room. Uh, we definitely have no cost this school year. Um, you know, thinking about the program and how it's an international like membership, mm -hmm. uh, IDRA pays to be a member. And so we, we take on those costs. There's a lot of costs that kind of go into that and even travel opportunities and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, um, all of that we're covering. And so uh, but we are seeking right now, I've, it's been grant season. So I've been grant writing like crazy. And we're trying to seek funding so that there are no costs in the future as we grow bigger and bigger and expand and new cabinets create more costs and all these mm -hmm. things. Um, as of right now, we're so you know small, but we are hoping to expand. And so as we expand, we wanna make sure we have the funding to support the sustainability of the program too. So. Sometimes in regions, there's a small cost, maybe $400 per CSO. So mm -hmm. it depends on how many CSOs you have, right, at your campus. Mm -hmm. And it could be something small like that just to help cover the training expenses, um, the gear, because the CSO polo, yes. the lanyard, all the things, the training binder and materials for you as the advisor and the CSOs. So usually that's the cost that it would be around. But again, we're hoping to secure funding so that that'll cover those costs for each DSO. Uh -huh. um, okay, thank you. I've got to go. I've got to get okay. my baby. My <laughs> no baby picked up from school, so. But well, hey, thank what's, you. what's school? I missed it in the chat. What school? Um, so I can write it Kruger down. Middle School. Oh, so, Kruger. Yeah. Awesome. So, awesome. And I've been talking with my instructional coach about that, about this, so. Well, I'll connect with you. I'll have your name on the registration list. I'll connect with you. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank, thank you so much. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you. All right. 
All right, well, we are at the conclusion of this webinar. Thank you so much for participating and even staying late with us. I will definitely connect with each and every single one of you. I have your emails and so I'll be sure to follow up. So you'll be hearing from me and I'll be sure to send you any other materials that you need. Uh, thank you again, Ernie. I'll definitely touch base with you very shortly, okay? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine. Thank you, Dan, our partners. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'll touch base with you. Thank you.